let's rise up on our feet to sing. We are singing from gospel hymn and songs, number 126. Gospel hymns and songs, number 126. Great God of wonders. Great God of wonders, all thy ways display the attributes divine for countless acts of pardoning grace. Beyond thy other wonders shine, who is, a, who is a pardoning God like thee, or who has grace so rich and free? In wonder loss, with trembling joy, we take the pardon of our God, pardon for crimes of deepest dye, our pardon bought with Jesus' blood, who is a pardoning God like thee. Or who has grace so rich and free? Pardon from an offended God. Pardon for sins of deepest dye. Pardon be so through Jesus' blood. Pardon that brings the, the bell near. Who is a pardoning God like thee? Or who has grace so rich and free? Oh, may this, oh, may this strange, this matchless grace. This God-like miracle of love fill the white heart with grateful praise as now it fills the choirs above. Who is a pardoning God like thee? Or who has grace so rich and free?
gospel hymns and songs, number 249. Gospel hymns and songs, number 200. We shall have a brief period of scripture reading. Luke chapter 12. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. And when they bring you unto the synagogues, and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer, or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns, and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens, 
that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about, and your lights burning, and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know, that if the goodman of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, Speakest thou this parable unto us, or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maid servants, and to eat and drink and to be drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required, and to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I, if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straitened till it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. I tell you, nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father. The mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother. The mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And he said also to the people, When ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway ye say, There cometh a shower. And so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, There will be heat. And it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites! Ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that ye do not discern this time? Yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? When thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him, lest he hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. I tell thee, thou shalt not depart thence till thou hast paid the very last might. Because Help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Manifestation tonight. Libration tonight. And as our pastor said, jubilation tonight. And the Lord confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. First day, second day, third day, and this is day number four. Something. North, south, east, west, everyone, something will happen to you. And the power of God will descend upon you. That be the manifestation of the glory of God in your life in Jesus' name. Whatever you have had before, salvation, miracle, power, glory, honor, and something, somebody took that away from you. Everything stolen from you, you recover tonight. Strength, you recover tonight. And everything promised by the Lord concerning you tonight is the night of recovery in your life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together, Father. Well, thank you. We well, bless your name today. And we're asking, Lord, you send forth your power and you send forth the manifestation of your promises on every life tonight in Jesus' name. Recovery for everyone. Restoration for everyone. The fulfillment of your promise for everyone. A divine touch in every life tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I'm not going to release you to sin until you give me a supernatural liberation. Amen. You've got it and you will give testimony in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, as we come, we're talking about miracles. Mighty miracles through Christ, our liberator, is the one that has come to set us free, to set you free. Any yoke broken tonight, every chain broken tonight, every cause taken out of your life tonight, in Jesus' name, mighty miracles through Christ, our liberator. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Reading from verse 22, Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Those three words there, miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him or by him, as ye yourselves also know. You will know it experientially tonight. It will be your experience. You'll be a possessor. You'll be a partaker in Jesus' name. Verse 39 says, The promise is unto you. The promise is unto me. The promise is unto me. Every promise the Lord has given for you to have the miracle working power operating in your life, that promise is yours for fulfillment tonight. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Look at that verse. It says you. You'll be a partaker of the miracle power tonight. Your children, our children, the young ones, they'll be partakers of the miracle power tonight. And all that are far off, 
afar off from the alpha location of the exclusive in every part of our country here and in every part of the continent of Africa and beyond Africa, all that are far off, even as many, as many, as many, anywhere, everywhere, the Lord our God shall call. Now, the message tonight is straightforward and very simple. And I'm going to look at the word miracles so that you can tell the mighty miracles that will come upon your life. M, merciful manifestations multiplied. Multiplied everywhere, here and every place. I, incredible impartation immediate. Christ comes like he always did the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then incredible impartation immediate in your life. Our repentant returnee received. It was returning from the far country. It was returning from where he had gone. And immediately he came back. The father received him. The father will receive you tonight. Wherever you have gone. Whatever you have done, whatever atrocities and evil you have committed as you return tonight, the repentant returnee is received. A, alien afflictions alleviated. All the foreign afflictions, where is this coming from? We never saw anything like this before. A family never saw anything like this before. Tonight, all those alien afflictions alleviated, taken away from your life in Jesus' name. See, confirmed, cures countless. Confirmed, the person there, your cure is confirmed. The person over there, your cure is confirmed. And then you left somebody at home and you remember, is that your mother? Is that your wife? Is that your husband? Is that that child that is bedridden tonight? Confirmed, Kills countless, and then L lonesome lepers liberated. The lepers that are lonely and lonesome, nobody will allow them to come near tonight. The Lord will liberate everyone. E endangered epileptics emancipated. Somebody has epileptics. His life is endangered, and the epileptic spirit will throw him into the fire and into the water. Tonight, and you are emancipated, completely delivered in Jesus' name. As sorry sinners saved. Sorry, not only they are, that they are sorrowful, but they are sorry for what they have done. And they come before the Lord and will say, Lord, we've gone astray. We've done what we shouldn't have done. And we know the consequence upon our lives. Sorry, sinners, saved. That's what you are looking at today. And in those uh, lines that I read to you now, you are somewhere there and you are going to get your miracle. Let's look at them one by one. M merciful manifestations multiplied here is a man that came he was asking for mercy it's in mark chapter 10 mark chapter 10 verse 46 and he came to jericho and as they went out of jericho with his disciples and a great number of people blind but Timaeus, the son of Timaeus such by the wayside highway begging and then he tells us in verse 47 it says and when he heard that it was jesus of nazareth he began to cry out and say jesus thou son of david have mercy on me and he had mercy on him and you tonight he will have mercy upon you he loves you and he does not want you to remain in that blindness. And because of that, you will see tonight by mercy, not by marriage, by mercy, it will open your blind eyes. 
have mercy on me. In verse 48, it says, And many charged him that they should hold his peace. But he cried the more, a great deal. He said, I am getting it tonight. Are you there? I am getting it tonight. I said, are you there? You are getting it tonight in Jesus' name. And they wanted to silence him, shut his mouth, and beat him down. He cried the more, a great deal. And he's repeating the same thing. He said, what I'm looking for is mercy, thou son of David. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. There is mercy for the blind today. Manifestation for the blind today. And it is going to be multiplied in many, many places. Over here at the Alpha location, it will have mercy on you. Your blind eyes will open. Over there in all the various locations, there is a multiplication of this manifestation of mercy that opens the eyes of the blind. It will happen tonight. And then we're told in verse 49, verse 49, and Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. He said, come, you are the called of the Lord. Your eyesight is failing and the Lord is calling you tonight. He said, come, your eyesight will brighten up. You are totally dim and dark and it's like you cannot see near, you cannot see far. It's calling you tonight. Manifestation of mercy will give you your eyesight back in Jesus' name. Cataract has stolen your sight. Glaucoma has stolen your sight. Or maybe an accident, somebody, something that pinched you has stolen your sight. That sight yeah, that have been stolen from you today, you will recover in Jesus' name. And then they call the blind man, saying, Be of good comfort. He rise, he calleth thee. Verse 50, it says, And he casting away his garment, the badge of blindness. He rose and he came to Jesus. Verse 51. <clears throat> in verse 51 and Jesus answered and said unto him what wilt thou that I should do unto thee that's the question coming to you today what do you want why are you here tonight what manifestation of mercy are you asking for tonight as to tell him tonight he will do it he will do it then he said that I should receive my sight. When he said that in verse 52, the Lord Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. He received his sight. You are receiving your sight? Blindness is going tonight. Glaucoma is going tonight and all those things that block your sight, they'll be removed tonight. You will be whole in Jesus name. And then he followed Jesus in the way. I come to the next one now that is I. Incredible impartation immediate. Incredible. What's going to happen to you tonight? Incredible. He'll make the impossible possible in your life. It will turn everything around. You will never be the same again. Look at Mark chapter 2. In Mark chapter 2, we're looking at verse 3. And they come unto him, bringing one seed of the palsy, which was born of four. The man was so sick, he couldn't even use crutches, and they stretched him on a stretcher. And then at each corner of the stretcher, a man stood there, and they had to carry him. Even if they carried you there tonight, you are rising up in Jesus' name. 
the power from on high we come upon you there you will rise up in jesus name look at verse uh, look at verse 4 there in verse 4 and when they could not come nigh unto him for the praise because of the crowd even if you are the far back and then you are not able to come near now at the end of this message when the mercy of god will be manifested to you you will rise up by yourself you will walk from that back place you'll walk to the front in jesus name i see you with my spiritual eyes i see you coming i see you receiving the miracle and then it says they uncovered the roof where he was and when they had broken it up they let him down they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay and then in verse 5 it says when jesus saw their faith when jesus saw their faith how do you see the faith of somebody well you can tell if somebody is sad and gloomy and sorrowful you can see the doubt on his face you can see the sorrow on his face when he hears that jesus is here and jesus is going to work miracle then he smiles then he cheers up he lifts up his eyes and you can see the brightness that the faith we're talking about there is expectation from the heart there's a desire from the heart and that he knows that as we say the final amen it's like stretching out your hand and you catch it that's the faith i see that faith on you there look at him there look at him there look at her there i see that faith and that faith will get the miracle of god tonight in jesus name when jesus saw their faith he said unto the sick of the palsy thy sins be forgiven thee thy sins be forgiven thee. tonight he will forgive your sins tonight it will take all the guilt and all the condemnation it'll take everything away in jesus name. look at verse 9 in verse 9 now the lord is going to heal the man like the lord is going to heal you tonight whether it's easier which one is easier to say to the sick of the palsy thy sins be forgiven thee or to say arise and take up thy bed and walk verse 10 then jesus said but that you may know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins he says to the sick of the palsy look at verse 11 in verse 11 i say unto thee it doesn't have to come and touch you it doesn't have to come and shake you it doesn't have to pull you up it's what alone do you understand it is the word of god that created the whole universe he said let there be light and there was light let there be and there will be let there be healing and there will be healing everywhere and immediately the word of god is pronounced tonight healing on my right hand side that will take place healing in front of me that will take place healing at the left that will take place and you will see the joy and the jubilation of the recipients of miracles tonight in jesus name i say unto thee arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house look at verse 12 and immediately he arose and he took up the bed and went forth before them all in so much that they were all amazed your family will be amazed when you get back home tonight and the people who knew you before see the mighty change and the great miracle they were amazed and they glorified god saying we never saw it on this fashion in your life we never saw it in this fashion on your child there we never saw it on this fashion that's what it will, it will happen tonight I say to you, to your family, and to everyone participating with us everywhere all over the globe, 
That is what will happen tonight. I, incredible impartation, immediate. Now we come to the next one, which is R. And this is repentant returnee received. This is the man who had led home, who had led the father. And it's the story of the one who has gone far away from God. He's gone into the far country and he's, used, he's made himself useless. He spent everything that he had bought. He said, why am I here? Why am I like this? I am going back to my God. You are coming back to your God tonight. You are coming back to the Savior tonight. You are coming back to the Redeemer tonight. Miracle are repentant, returnee, receive. Look at Luke chapter 15, verse 14. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And then in verse 17, in verse 17, and when he came to himself, and when his senses came back, and he said, I could have forgiveness, I could have freedom, I could have reception, I could have regeneration, I could have redemption from the Lord. Why am I here? Then he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. Then in verse 17, he said, I will arise, I will arise. And go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Then in verse 19, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. In verse 20, it says, and he arose. He decided, I will arise. He acted it out and he arose. He had the intention, I will arise. And he followed the intention with action. When your action follows your intention, a miracle will happen in your life. When your decision follows your desire, restoration, salvation, will happen in your life. That's the time the Heavenly Father will forgive you. That's the time Christ who died for you on the cross of Calvary will save your soul. He arose and he came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. The father has seen you there. He knows your tears. He knows your sorrow. He knows your heartache. He knows your problem as you are coming and you are saying, This is my heavy load, and this is my problem, and this guilt, and this condemnation, and this suffering because of my sin. He has seen all you are thinking about, and forgiveness is waiting for you. Salvation is waiting for you. And then we're told, he had compassion and he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. In verse 21, the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Verse 22 tells us, But the father said unto his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put on him and put the ring of authority on his hand and shoes on his feet. And in verse 23, it says, And bring the heather, the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. Heaven is rejoicing because of you tonight. Joy in heaven for you. Because the repentant returnee is now received of the Lord. In verse 24, it says, For this my son was dead and is alive again. You were dead in sins and trespasses. But praise the Lord, you are alive in Christ again tonight. In Jesus' name, he was lost and is found. 
and they began to be merry. That's miracle. When you repent, and then you return, and the Lord receives you. And then we have a now, and that is alien afflictions alleviated. Alien afflictions alleviated. It says in Mark chapter 7, reading from verse 25, For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him, and came and fell at his feet. She came. When she was coming, she knew this coming. Once I get to him, the one who can deliver, who can set free, and the one who can alleviate any affliction, whether it is alien or not, once I get to him, I'll be delivered, and my daughter will be delivered. Tonight, you'll be delivered. Your daughter will be delivered. And your son will be delivered. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, and the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Verse 27. In verse 27, and Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. Let the children first be filled. Those who are saved, those who are children of God, the Lord said, it's your right. And it is your provision. And the Lord is looking for you that before he even touches others, you are the first recipient of the miracle power of God. Tonight, you are first. I said tonight, you are the first. And then he goes on to say, and uh, so the woman now said, For it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. Look at verse 28. Verse 28 says, And she answered, What did she say? I'm not going to hinder the children. I'm not going to hinder those who are going to be forced. And they will receive but Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And I'm ready. Let the children and the Jews and the people of Israel, let them take forth. But I will not go back home disappointed. The crumbs are not for me and my daughter will be delivered. Look at verse 29. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. Where are you? A devil is gone out of your son. Out of your brain. Out of your body. The devil, with all his evil things, everything is gone in Jesus' name. Look at verse 30 there in verse 30. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out. She found the devil gone out. Where is he now? Is he with you there? I said, is he with you there? That devil must go out. That demon must go out. That disease must go out. And then her daughter laid upon the bed. Rest for your soul. Rest for your brain. Rest for your body. Total liberation, deliverance for everyone in Jesus' name. See, it's confirmed, chaos, countless. We can't even count anymore. The chaos... Confirmed. Blind eyes opening. Confirmed. Deaf ears opening. Confirmed. Dumb tongues and speaking out. All confirmed. The lame rising up and walking. Chaos. Countless. Confirmed. It will happen in your life. In Matthew chapter 11, reading from verse 3. Matthew chapter 11, verse 3. And said unto him, Are thou he that shall come? 
or look we for another? Look at verse 4. In verse 4, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again the things which ye do hear and see. You hear, you see. Tonight, you will hear. Tonight, you will see. Confirmed chaos. Countless. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, the blind receive their sight confirmed. The lame walk confirmed. The lepers are cleansed confirmed. The deaf hear confirmed. The dead are raised up confirmed. And the poor have the gospel preached unto them confirmed. Countless miracles. Countless deliverances, countless cures, all confirmed in our lives here tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. L is the lonesome lepers like Britain. Lonesome lepers like Britain. You see, the lepers those days, they were even now. They were not expected and they were not allowed to mix with the crowd because the disease was contagious. It will pass from them to other people. There you are tonight. Even if you have a contagious disease that could easily spread. And they said you must be isolated. And you must stay in a place. You can't touch people and people can't touch you tonight. You're liberated in Jesus' name. Look at it in Matthew chapter 8 and read him from verse 2. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. What do you say about this man, about this leper? One thing, he owned Christ as Lord. He submitted his soul, his spirit, his life, unto the Lord. He said, I'm not worth much, and whatever is left, I surrender unto the Lord. And now I declare you that you will be my Lord, and my director, and the controller of my life. And then he said, now as you are Lord, and I bring myself as a subject under you, you can cleanse me. It will cleanse you. You can heal me. It will heal you. If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Look at verse 3 there. In verse 3, And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. Miracle walking touch. And touched him. A healing touch. And touched him. A cleansing touch. Tonight, that supernatural touch will come upon your life. Because you own him as Lord. You accept him as Lord. You submit to him as Lord. And you say you are my Lord. And with you all things are possible. If thou wilt and he wills. You can heal me and cleanse me. And he said I will. Be thou clean. And immediately. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. The Lord is still doing that. And the Lord is still cleaning up the unclean. And he's still healing the incurable. We come to the next one now. That is E, endangered epileptics emancipated. An epileptic boy. And the spirit will take him and cast him into the, into the water and cast him into the fire to destroy him. The devil wanted to destroy your life, but the Lord will not allow your life to be destroyed. It will deliver you. Epilepsy will vanish away. Evil spirit will vanish away. Total emancipation tonight in Jesus' name. Look at Mark chapter 9 verse 20. Mark chapter 9 verse 20. And they brought him, the epileptic boy, unto him, unto Christ. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit cheered him. 
and he fell on the ground and wallowed for me. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, and he asked the father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. Whatever problem, whatever deformity, and whatever disease you had from a child, no matter how old you are now, tonight, the Lord will take it away. In verse 22, in verse 22 it says, and of times, it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, can Christ do anything? That challenge you up there, can Christ do anything tonight? And that uh, impossible situation, impossible for man, can, that, can Christ do anything tonight? Tell me. With faith, tell me. Yeah. With expectation, tell me. Yeah. All the disciples are prayed and nothing happened. Can something happen tonight? Yeah. Let your yes be known in heaven. Yeah. If thou canst do anything on, on him, have compassion on us and help him. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. If you can only, and thank God you believe, say, I believe. I believe. Uh, see what the Lord has been doing on the first day. He saved many people and he gave them a new heart. A new direction in life. He healed them of ulcer. He healed them of pile. And then he healed them of that ear that, uh, you know, was bringing up pulse and pain and something swollen there. He healed them of paralysis. He healed them of blindnesses where came. And he's done that in many places. Lord, I believe. It will happen tonight. Over there on that side, it will happen tonight. Look at him, look at him there. It's coming your way. It's going to happen tonight. And over there, it will happen tonight in Jesus' name. If thou canst only believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Look at verse 24. It says, straightway the father of the child cried out, and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. He said, before now, before I came to you tonight, I've already, I was already having unbelief. I was thinking, will this be possible? Will this be done? But now that I see you face to face, Lord, I believe. And erase and wipe out all my unbelief of the past. And then in verse 25, it says, when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. That the command the Lord is giving to the mountain in your life. The problem in your life. And the Lord is saying, come out of him and come back no more. Sickness, come out and don't come back anymore. Infirmity, come out and don't come back anymore. Evil power, evil spirit, charm or curse, come out and never come back again. I see you free. I see you delivered. I see you enjoying the miracle power of God in your life in Jesus' name. In verse 26, verse 26, it says, and the spirit cried and rent him so and came out. They may play any trick, but they still have to come out and came out. They may struggle, but they still have to come out. They will come out. They may make a person cry, make a person shout, but they still have to come out. That thing has to come out tonight. And came out of him, and he was as one dead in so much that many said, he is dead. No, you are not dead. No, he was not dead. 
power will come. The power will not hurt you. The power will only drive out that demon. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, And Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. Jesus takes you by the hand, and he lifts you up. And you will arise. Amen. How can you believe when Christ is there by your side? How can you still be there having that ability problem when Christ is there with you? He'll take hold of you. He will lift you up and you will arise. Amen. Then you'll walk to the front and you'll come over here where we'll hear your testimony tonight. Where are you? You will give your testimony tonight in Jesus' name. Miracles. S means sorry sinners saved. Those who are sorry for their sin. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, reading from verse 9. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. When you become sorry for your sin and you turn and you repent, all danger, all damage, all damnation, everything will vanish away. Guilt, condemnation, everything will vanish away. You have been going on the broad road that leads to eternal death, eternal separation from God. Then you see all that is happening in your life. Then you feel sorry. Why am I like this? Christ died for me. And Christ is my savior. Why am I going that direction? You are so sorry, you stop. You are so sorry, you turn around. You're so sorry, you tell the Lord, forgive me. And then all danger, all damnation, all judgment will be taken away from you. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, for godly sorrow, walketh repentance to salvation. Not to be repented of, not to be regretted of, but the sorrow of the world walketh death. Now, your being sorry before the Lord will bring salvation to you right there. Sorry sinners saved. 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 Nothing can contradict that. Satan cannot steal that salvation. Your thoughts cannot steal that salvation. And neighbors cannot steal that salvation. You feel sorry. For the sins you have committed, and you say, Lord, I am sorry, I repent, I turn, forgive me. That forgiveness has now come. Amen. Where are you? Forgiveness. I said, where are you? Salvation. I said, where are you? Condemnation will be taken away from your life. I'm sure you are ready. Heaven is ready. I'm sure you are ready. God is ready to spell out this miracle in your life tonight. I'm sure you are ready. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord is saying now, He will show mercy. He will show compassion. And as you turn away from your sin, and you are sorry, deeply sorry, the Lord will bring salvation right now. And if you want that forgiveness, if you want that salvation, if you want him to write your name in the book of life, as you are sorry for the sins you have committed, and you confess, and you forsake them, wherever you are, raise up your hands. Salvation is available for you now. God bless you there. That's good. God bless you there. That's good. As you are raising up your hands, Please stand up and receive the pardon and receive the forgiveness. You're sorry for what you've done and you're telling the Lord, I no more go back to them. 
I want your salvation now. Your being sorry makes you to stop those things that you're not going to do them by His grace, by His grace. And the Lord will have mercy on you. He will save you now. When will He save you? I say, when will He save you? When will He forgive you? Now. Rise up with your hands raised anywhere you are in a country here, in every country in Africa, and you're sorry for your sin, and you're coming for the salvation of the Lord, rise up wherever you are and tell the Lord, I am sorry. That's all it takes. I've gone astray. I am sorry. I sinned. I am sorry. I followed after evil things. I am sorry. Forgive me, Lord. That's right. He forgives immediately. Let me pray with you now, Father. We well, thank you. You loved us so much that you sent Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, to take away our sin, take away our guilt, take away our condemnation, and give us forgiveness and salvation. I pray, Lord. Your salvation will be real in every heart right now in Jesus' name. Wipe away all their sins and set them free. And give them the power to go and live in new life right now. Let your peace come into their heart. Let your joy come into their heart. Let the assurance of salvation come to everyone now. As they turn away from their sin and they return unto the Lord, receive everyone into your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, because I know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord, it is done. Say, my sins are forgiven. Say it aloud, my sins are forgiven. I am saved. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. We call on our state, uh, Pastor, Pastor Sam, to lead us now in this uh, counseling period. I'll be coming back, and your miracle that you need, the Lord will grant unto everyone today. You are taking the most important decision in your life now. Do it with joy. Fill the forms that are being given out there. Just pick one as they give you. Fill it. Fill it cor correctly. Give proper information there. Write your name correctly, your full name. The name you are popularly known with. Write out your phone numbers correctly with 11 digits. You also write your WhatsApp number, if you have, and describe your address correctly. The purpose is for us to get in touch with you to help you grow in Christ. If you have been given a parcel, that is a special package from our Father in the Lord with a wonderful book inside. And there's a tract there for you to read. All the materials are for you. Counselors, let's spread right to the back. Don't stay congested at the front. And if you have finished from your segment, move to another segment. We have converse left and right. Meet them. They are very, very important personalities. Heaven rejoices with them right now. Please, those who are online, connect with Christ. There is a phone number online there. Use that phone number to send your information by SMS or by WhatsApp message. The number is plus two, three, four. Nine one five four 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 nine two six three. I pick it again. Plus 
two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. If you are listening over the television, if you are connected with us on NTA Jalingo uh, or anywhere in the world, you are listening over the television or you are listening over the radio, please do the same thing. There is a website there too. Click on your handset or any device and fill the form. Counselors, help those who cannot write to write. And after that, check everything before you submit. And if you have finished filling your own, give to the counselor. Let's go towards the back, even at the gate. And the car park by my right hand side over there on the field. Please feel correctly and submit to your supervisor who will take you to the right place. Let's be fast about it and please wait for the miracle prayer. Tonight is a night of celebration, a night of joy. We are going to jubilate. This fortnight, we are going to jubilate. The servant of God has pronounced that you will give your testimony tonight. So be expectant. Why not pour your heart unto God at this time as we are waiting for our Father in the Lord to come and release the power and the miracle come upon your life. Miracles are coming. Miracles are going to be released. Be praying now and be asking God, I will never go empty-handed. I will not live here without my miracle. Remember, we are in the fourth day of this crusade. And it is not too late for God to give you your miracle. In fact, your own has been reserved until now. So be crying to God at this time, holding on to God, telling him, tonight I must give my testimony. Tonight, I must give my testimony. Counselors, if you are done, please wave at us. Be fast about that and submit your form. And when you finish, don't leave that place. Don't leave that place because there is somebody very close to you there that is about to receive his miracle that is about to receive her miracle. So stay by them. And the moment you see the miracle happen, you bring them out. In the language church, let's explain to them correctly and allow them to also pray through and expect their miracle. As you are seated or standing, be praying. Be expecting. Be calling upon God. What is that long outstanding problem in your life? What is that swelling in your body? That goiter. That cancer. That hyena. That short leg. Whatever is the name tonight, it is going to bow. Be preparing your mind now, prepare your heart, because it is about to happen. Manifestation, jubilation. Counselors, if you have finished, can you wave at us here? You have finished, wave. Those are the front. I can see you are done. Far at the middle. If you are done from here, please get to the middle and help those who are there. And get into the children's church for those who are inside there. And please, there should be counselors everywhere. In the car park, along the road, along the gate. The people surrendering their lives to Christ, they are everywhere. 
be getting ready now because miracle is about to be released. Let's rise up as we welcome our Father in the Lord, the servant of God, who will release the miracle upon us tonight. I am ready. Are you ready? Heaven is ready for you. That miracle is coming now. Your blind eyes will open. If you are lame, when you hear the final amen, rise up, you will walk. Whatever the condition, the incurable will be cured tonight. You raise up one hand and you lay the other hand upon yourself. We're ready now. After the final amen, key to it, it is done. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love. And the Lord Jesus has told us at the prodigal son returned with all the problems, the Father received him. You receive everyone right now. Amen. And I pray, Lord, mercy for miracle will come upon everyone. Amen. Blind eyes will open by your mercy. Amen. Cancer will be healed by your mercy. Amen. The lame will rise up and walk all by your mercy. Amen. Deaf ears will hear all by your mercy. Amen. And dumb tongues will speak out all by your mercy. Miracle of mercy upon everyone now in Jesus' name. That epileptic spirit, I command you, come out right now. And enter no more into them in Jesus' name. That incurable disease be cured right now. Recover right now. Lord, I pray for everyone expecting whatever the problem, whatever the disease, this is the day of your manifestation for everyone. Confirm it in every life. On my right, in front of me, to my left, in all the various locations, worldwide, confirm your cure and confirm the healing and confirm the miracle in Jesus' name. Amen. It is done. Amen. It is done. Amen. Receive it in your body in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the confirmation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is done. Check up and you'll find your miracle is right there. It is done. It is done. 